Hey guys, welcome back. This is Professor Hank, and in this video, I've got another quick lesson for you on Lisp. And in this lesson, I'm just going to show you, you know, how to get some input from the user and put some output on the screen. Uh, you know, just using basically standard in, standard out. And what we're going to use in this uh, lesson is going to be the print function, the prints function, read function, read line, uh, read care. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'll take a look at the print function first and show you how this thing works. All right, so print function, you can pass to it as an argument, a object, right? And so, you know, if I put a string, right, if I pass that as an argument and run this, um, then what am I going to see? Well, it prints out the entire contents um, of the object here, the string, the, the whole thing, right? So quotes, contents of the string and all, right? Now, if I wanted um, to print out, say, a list, right, then I can do that as well, right? So you can see there's the entire list, right? So print is kind of like um, a function that works at the object level, I suppose you could say. Whereas print C, if we use this, print C behaves more like what you're used to from, say, like C out from C++, right? So I could go in here and I could say, well, hello world, right? And um, when I do that, then I run this and you see as output, you know, kind of what you're, more of what you're expecting, right? So hello world right here. Um, now, after the last print function call here on six, line six, you know, there was no new line character moving to the beginning of the next line. Um, print C just prints out the contents of, um, you know, the string and, and that's it, right? So, you know, if I take a look at backslash in here, you can see that um, one, this is another thing I wanted to show you, right? Normally you're used to escape sequences from like C, C++, something like that. Um, not going to work here. So what we have instead is another function. And that function is terpre, right? So what that does is that just puts a new line character on the screen, right? So um, I'll comment out these other guys because we're done with those in the, in the previous example. But if I wanted to move stuff um, onto separate lines, then I could use that thing right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this, right? And you can see, look, you know, now I got, you know, standard strings like what you would be uh, expecting. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at read, read line, and read care. So, you know, read line does what you would expect it to do. It's going to read um, an entire line of input from the keyboard uh, up through a new line character. Read care is going to read a single character. And that character that it returns, it's um, returned as a character object. Um, now, read reads in whatever you type and returns it as an equivalent object, right? So, for example, if you typed in um, a list um, at the at the keyboard, right? Something that looks like a list, then um, it would store that as a list, right? As opposed to um, a string like 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 with get line, you know, whatever you type, it's a, it's a string, okay? Um, but with read and read care, uh, whatever you type there, they're going to be returning. Um, object representations of those things, okay? So anyway, um, let me show you how these work. Um, so, for example, um, we'll do read line first, right? So maybe I want to ask you to give me your name, right? So I could say with prints, I could say, you know, enter your name, right? And once you've done that, uh, or once I've shown you that, then what I can do is I can read your response, right? So I could say, well, read line, okay? Um, but if I want to use that for further processing in the program, 
then I'd have to assign that to a variable, right? So I will do that, right? So I'll say, um, you know, your name, okay? And then once I've gotten that from you, I'll go ahead and um, print your name back to you, right? So I'll print your name, right? Um, so let's go ahead and try that. Um, I'll, I'll uh, comment out these other guys just so they don't clutter our output over here on our sample when we run the thing over right here on the left. So let's go ahead and run it. So you can see enter your name, that's from line 14. Say, hey, my name is Hank Stilica, right? Hit enter. And then, you know, I set the variable set Q um, with the, excuse me, I set the variable your name using set Q and it stored the Hank Stilica object, right? Now print, prints out that string as if it were an object. So if I wanted to, you know, actually see you know, something a little bit more friendlier, then I could say, well, how about we do print C, right? So let's try that, okay. Right, so see the difference there, right? One shows you the actual string, the other shows you, you know, an object representation um, of that, okay? So what about, um, I'll call, comment these out too. Uh, what about if I wanted to um, read a single character, right? Um, so if I was going to do that, then I could ask you, hey, you know, enter a character. Now, of course, I could read it in the character as a single, you know, as a string with just one element in it, and then use that character as an actual character. But if I needed a character that was being stored as a character object, right? then what I would need to do is I would need to say, well, read care, and then I could set that in um, in a variable, set Q, a, yeah, I'll just call it A, right? And then I could turn around and print uh, A, right? So let's go ahead and try this again, right? So how about G, okay? So this right here, this notation with the pound sign, the backslash over here, that's just notation that represents, hey, this is the um, object, an object of G. So object, of, a character object G could be um, placed inside of a list, for example, okay? Um, let's see here. So what else do I wanna do? Um, did read line, we did read care. So what about read, okay? Now read will read anything, not just a character, um, and return it as an appropriate type of object. So that's useful when you want to actually do some math, for example, right? So let's say that in my list program, I needed to, um, you know, add a couple numbers together, right? So I could do something that looks like this: en enter num one. And then I would read in your response. So I'd say set Q, um, num1, and that's gonna be the result of a read, okay? Well, then I wanna ask you for the second number, right? And then I'll say, all right, fine. Uh, let's set a second variable to whatever was read in. And then let's say now I wanna do some addition. Uh, I wanna add these numbers together. Well, now, instead of num1 and num2, I actually have numbers that I can do some um, addition with, right? So I might do something like this. I might say, well, let's set the uh, answer uh, equal to um, the result of num1 and num2, okay? And then once that's done, you know, I can go ahead and um, show you the answer. Uh, so answer, okay? So let's go ahead and try that. Okay, so first number 87, second number 33, and you know there's your answer, uh, 120. Okay, so I think uh, that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. Um, for additional information, for more depth, you know, check uh, the link that I posted in the comments below. Um, but in this video, I just wanted to show you, hey, here's a couple of different ways that you can read stuff in. Here's a couple of different ways you can. Um, print stuff out, basic I.O. Uh, for your list programs, okay?